Hello friends and subscribers, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Daniel Rose, we're bringing you this video today from Jerusalem on the 4th of December, according to my calendar. Uh, no, the 14th, that shows you I'm on the verge of insanity, I don't even know the date to the nearest 10 days. Uh, it's the 14th of December, uh, which means we're 10 days from Christmas, um, which is quite exciting, and also means a funny, funny story to just diverge before we get into this video today. Uh, the Jerusalem municipality in July, in the heat of the Middle Eastern summer, uh, put up, apparently by accident, Christmas decorations. They're Willy Wonka style candy canes, uh, uh, stars and stuff like that. They're very, very Christmassy. And it was quite funny at the time. Uh, and it's been quite funny ever since. And now it's finally appropriate. So after looking at these Christmas decorations for verging on six months, uh, the, the the claim is that someone, and I think this is probably what actually happened, that someone at the Jerusalem municipality bought these without, you know, understanding the Christian symbolism. Uh, but now they're just kind of nice. Uh, so we have a festive Christmas atmosphere in downtown Jerusalem, uh, as we've had for the last six months. But at least it's t it's at least at least it's seasonally appropriate now. Um, I want to talk today about these uh, recommendations from the National Security Council for Travel X Israel. I uh, just want to say, firstly, that my YouTube channel is, needless to say, not a source of official travel information. Uh, so do not uh, uh, act on these, or I should say verify these, but I do, I did want to highlight these because I think they're important for Israelis uh, to be aware of where it's not recommended to go currently and where it's less not recommended. Personally, I'm not traveling. Um, I was actually, I traveled back to Israel when the war broke out from Spain. And uh, I don't feel right about the idea of traveling, not just because it's risky, but because it's such a volatile situation here. And I don't think any of us know how it's going to play out and change at any time. Uh, so that's been my personal decision, but everyone makes their own one about what's appropriate. Uh, but we do have these sort of official recommendations from this government body called the National Security Council. And these were promulgated on the 4th of December. So just to make the point that these aren't like uh, the official, well, firstly, they're 10 days out of date. So uh, if you're watching this after that point, check to see if they've been updated. And uh, they're not binding. So like, you know, this, they just make recommendations for where they think Israelis uh, should not travel or should not travel less. But they're not going to like pull you off a plane to say, hey, we told you not to go to Paris. What are you doing? Get off the plane. Uh, that won't happen. Uh, so, but anyway, I want to just kind of read through their advice because i think you know we many of us have business relationships or in family relationships in other countries and might need to travel uh so i'm just going to read this sort of communique since the beginning of operation swords of iron the national security council has been conducting ongoing situational assessments together with the israeli security organizations Consequently, an announcement was released to the public on November 3rd, 2023, listing recommendations for the conduct of Israelis abroad at this time and emphasizing the threat level in several countries. Uh, the, threat, the threat level in dozens of countries has been changed, detailed on the website. The threat level for many countries in Western uh, Europe, including the UK, France and Germany, and South America, including Brazil and Argentina, as well as Australia and Russia, has been raised to a level two threat with the recommendation to exercise increased precaution. Um, and the threat level for countries in Africa, including South Africa and Eritrea and Central Asia, including Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan and Turkmenistan, has been raised to a level three with the recommendation to reconsider non-essential travel to these countries. Um, since the beginning of the war, we have identified efforts by Iran and its proxies, including Hamas and global jihad factions, to harm Israeli and Jewish targets around the world. Um, and there is an increased, a significant rise in incitement, attempted attacks and manifestations of anti-Semitism in many countries. Uh, and this is the important bit, I think. Therefore, the NSC reiterates and underlines the recommendation to weigh the, essential, the essentiality of travel at this time. For Israeli citizens traveling abroad, we recommend choosing their destinations wisely while exercising recommended precautionary measures wherever they are and examining their conduct in light of the recommendations detailed in the NSC website and especially. 
Um, postponing travel to countries for which travel warnings have been issued, particularly Arab and Middle Eastern countries, the North Caucasus, um, bordering Iran and several Muslim countries. And then they also recommend that you check whether there have been anti-Israel protests at the destination, even in countries for which no travel warnings have been issued. They recommend that you stay away from uh, the demonstrations and the protests where, where, they, where they take place. They recommend that you remain alert while you're abroad and uh, just, you know, keep vigilant. And they avoid, and they recommend, and this is sad, but understandable, avoid openly displaying your Israeli and Jewish identities and any relevant symbols and staying away from Israeli and Jewish gatherings. So I just want to point out how wild this is, that the Israeli government is recommending, this is an Israeli government website, gov.il body, is recommending that Israelis and Jews hide their Israeli and Jewish identity wherever they are in the world. That is actually the official recommendation of the Israeli government at this point in time. Crazy. Who would have thought it? Um, and then they are, just to finish off the communique, uh, finding out in advance the phone numbers for emergency services in the destination country. Okay, what I wanted to show also was just the travel map. Um, there's two files linked off to in this communique, as I'm calling it. This one here, they show you the... Um, what it's an alphabetized list by country and you can see what the warning was before October 7th uh, and what it's been raised to like Albania it was an existing travel level of one and they've recommended upping Albania to level three curiously where Ireland is Ireland was one which is like the lowest threat level uh, I think four is the highest uh, but we'll find out in the map let's just see we can find out the map now actually yeah level four is the highest so it's a one to four scale uh, one to four scale. So Ireland was one, which was no threat, and now it's been raised to two, which is potential threat, which makes a lot of sense to me personally. Uh, so let's take a look at just the map. I'm going to go over it quickly. I'll just mush myself out of the screen a bit so you can see the map more clearly. So North America is uh, currently on, again, this is just accurate as on October 4th. Uh, the US was is actually one as well as Mexico and Canada. Uh, but Latin America is higher for the most part with Brazil and Argentina and Bolivia on threat level two of four uh, and other parts of South America level one. Moving over to Europe, uh, we can see that it's a threat level two for lots of Europe, Ireland, the UK, France, Spain, Germany, Italy. Um, and then uh, again, this is like kind of a heat map, right? So four is the highest. So we can see that Turkey is a four. Um, Africa is a four. Some some countries have different threat levels, and that's why they get different shades. Other parts of Africa only two, South America three, and then moving into Asia, uh, Japan and Mongolia are the considered to be the less dangerous parts of Asia for Israeli travelers for whatever reason I don't know. They're on one, whereas China is on two. Uh, Iran and Afghanistan clearly are on four. That makes abundant sense. And Australia there is level two. And just to show you guys the uh, scale being used here, one is that there is no travel threat currently. Uh, so that's, for example, Japan. Uh, level two is where they say there's a potential threat, for example, Ireland. Moderate threat is level three, for instance, Indonesia and Papua New Guinea. And a high threat level is level four. And an example would be Iran and Afghanistan. So that's how uh, those are the current recommendations. Uh, valid October 4th, but as I say, they're subject to change. And it's a good idea if you are an Israeli person thinking about traveling really anywhere in the world at this time, I would uh, look up the latest recommendations and heed what they say, including the uh, points about staying away from demos. Uh, and unfortunately, very, very sad that people have to disguise their Jewish identities, but also Israeli identities. So that would be like speaking Hebrew. Uh, for instance. Uh, so these are definitely difficult times, uh, but the National Security Council or NSC is helping to guide people towards making the most prudent decisions possible in these circumstances. Thanks for watching today's video. For more videos uh, about stuff to do with Israel and Jerusalem, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching today.